<laughs> ah, yes, well, it's, it's uh, Friday, and when this program's over, you can begin to enjoy the weekend. So only half an hour to go before you all have a lot of fun, but they've got to enjoy <laughs> the next half hour first, haven't they, Carol? <laughs> are we going to be serious today, then, are we? We're going to be in... We are, I'm, in I'm in benign mood, I think. Oh, benign is the word. Not absolutely over the top, mm. you know, not... Uh, not so lowness, in lowness is a word we had yesterday, yes. but just uh, in benign mood. So you're not highness, you're, you're middleness. Middle, middle, middle. middle middling, okay. Ab yeah. terribly average. No. Yes, you're Hang very on. good at the kind of the middleness yeah, yeah. aspects. I think we're getting into deep water here, Carol. Okay. Okay, because we have, as you know only too well, we have a brand new champion at the end of the week. And what a champion he is. Will you please welcome a champion and, of course, challenger, champion Jimmy O'Rourke and challenger Daniel Summers. Uh, well, Jimmy, how do you feel? This is a question you should never ask on television, but I'm going to ask you. How do you feel to be the new champion? Uh, surprised. 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 But what a game it was. He may well have been surprised because he knocked out uh, old uh, Chris Toyne there, who was coasting on very nicely to eight undefeated uh, appearances. And just at the very end, just by two points, he, he failed. He failed. So, Jimmy, a great game yesterday, and welcome to that champion's chair. Well deserved. But how long will you there? Rain it depends on this young man, Daniel Summers. Daniel is 16. He lives in Baldock in, Art, in Hertfordshire. He's a student at Knights Templar School and he's a member of the local church youth group. Now, he likes uh, taking part in geography quizzes and, of course, living in Baldock, he's a football fan. And where do you think he's a football fan of? Of which club is he a fan of? Anyone know? Yes, you've guessed it. If you live in Baldock, you've got to support Leeds United. <laughs> is that true? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Good lad. Uh, he also says he likes carry-on films, so it seems as though he'll have a great deal of fun with us, whether he wins or loses. So that's, oh. that's Daniel Summers. All right. Uh, I told you I was feeling average today. <laughs> well, last time our G of the D beat our contestants with the eight-letter winner Elision, Illusions, E-L-U-S-I-N, Illusions, which uh, is, uh, represents many escapes from dangerous situations. Well, as you can see, he hasn't had a close shave for a while, but he may raise a laugh or two. So welcome, with Anna Eaton, it's Rick Wakeman. I think that's quite right that Daniel should support Leeds. I live on the Isle of Man and support Manchester City. Work that one out if you can, Rick. <laughs> What's wrong with Ramsey United or... Have you seen that? Well, I've been not saying anything against, uh, <laughs> against the... Actually, there's, there are some good sides on the, on the Isle of Man, but uh, Main Road's the place. Should be jolly good at football with their three legs. I don't know. You'd be OK, <laughs> wouldn't you? Uh, right. Jimmy O'Rourke and Danny <coughs> Summers, the battle commences. Consonant, please, Carol. Thank you, Jimmy. M. The vowel. O. Not a vowel. A. Consonant. <laughs> <laughs> Something I never do. N. Vowel. <laughs> e. Consonant. Uh oh. S. <laughs> Consonant. Money, money. L. Uh, vowel. A vowel, which is I. And a consonant. And G. Okay, that's the first selection. Here we go. Jimmy. Seven. Seven says Jimmy. Daniel. Risky seven. A risky seven. Better hear the risky one, Daniel. Moling. M-O-L-E-I-N-G. We'll see. James. Loaming. Loaming and moling. Heck. Um, moling, I'm afraid, we cannot accept. So it was a risky seven. Yes. <laughs> uh, Unfortunately. No. Lo loaming is an, it's an adjective, loamy, but there isn't. It's only a noun, yeah. It's fertile soil of clay and sand. It's only a, so, 
But you could have had something that actually tastes like fertile sort of clay and sand, and that's semolina. Yeah. Um, and you found gasoline, and which gasoline. is gasoline, which is what the, my school semolina used to taste like. So, but uh, no, that's it's a noun, so you can't have anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I hated semolina at school. It was always on a Wednesday. I used to cry. <laughs> I did. Aww. Mind you, I was 17 at the time. <laughs> Well, no points. Nil point. So, off you go, Daniel, for a, another go, then. Consonant, please, Carol. Thank you, Daniel. W. And another. S. And a vowel, please. O. And another vowel. E. Consonant. C. Consonant. N. Another vowel, please. E. Consonant. P. And a consonant, please. And a consonant. Thank you very much. And B. All right, uh, so better luck this time, chaps. Here we go. Well, Daniel. Six. Six. James. Seven. Seven. Six, please, Daniel. Ponce is Jimmy. Obscene. Obscene is excellent. Yes, very, very good. Very, very good. And Ponce is fine too, but uh, obscene is excellent. <laughs> okay, well, at least we're on the, the ball there with a seven there, and yet to score, uh, Daniel. So let's move on now to round three. Uh, Jimmy. Uh, consonant, please, Carol. R. Vowel. I. Another vowel. A. Consonant. G. Consonant. V. Vowel. E. Consonant. N. Vowel. I. And a consonant. Thank you. And none of those on this show. T. Okay, round three it is. Here we go. Seven, Daniel. Eight. Good. Right, here the seven then. Vinegar. Vinegar? Yeah. Good. Now an eight. Averting. Everything's there for averting. Just check, and if it is, you'll get a ripple of applause, I am sure. Averting yes. is fine. Yes. yes. Very done. Very well done. Very well done. <laughs> Any alternatives? Other sevens well, on the right? You could say that the answer he gave was riveting, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. which is the... <laughs> Which is there, but averting is great. Yeah, really good. That's riveting special. there, just yep. that one, that one T, of course, riveting. Good. Well, off the mark in fine style there. Eight and seven after three letters game. So let's see how you're doing the numbers now, Daniel. Please. I have four from the top, and any other two, please. Oh. <laughs> I see. Is this because you think you're good at numbers, or you're not good at numbers? Wait and see. Oh. <laughs> He's a fan Tough. of Leeds United. He's an optimist. <laughs> Tough talk. Four and six, and you know the rest. Twenty-five, one hundred, seventy-five, and fifty. Gulp. And the target is uh, two hundred and ninety-nine. Okay, two ninety-nine. Then let's go for that in thirty seconds. Nine, Daniel. Two nine nine. Right, Jimmy. 
No, that lost it. Went for the wrong number. <laughs> You went for 200 instead of 300. You wrote down the wrong number. I went for 199. You went for 199. Okay, well, that's bad luck. Um, so, Daniel, let's look at your 299 then. 6 times 50 is 300. Yeah, 650s are 300. 100 divided by 25, it's 4. Yeah. Divide that by 4, you get yeah. 1. You get the and 1 and take it away. away. Yeah. Yes. When you saw that carol, that's very good. Did you see, when you saw that carol, with those four from the top, obviously, and then yeah. the six and the four, which obviously make ten, yeah. did you groan? Or yes, did you I think, did, particularly yeah. because these are two even numbers. Yeah. Um, but obviously, because it's so close to a, a round number, then it, it made it uh, potentially slightly easier. But yeah. uh, No, you can be snookered sometimes, often, I've found, <laughs> <laughs> with four from the top. Well, this lad wasn't snookered. That's fantastic. So... Uh, there he is there with uh, 18 points. So 18 points to seven. Um, obviously a low score, lowest score for half-time, but a very good first half. Nonetheless, and the quality of the first half will now continue in the very capable hands of Mr. Rick Wakeman. Well, this story really is a tribute to the people who, uh, people in the entertainment industry meet in the street who are really for their brutal honesty. And uh, this concerns a story going back into the 70s when I used to have a radio show on Capital Radio in London. And I used to have a small allowance to go to a record shop and buy a certain amount of records uh, to take on to the programme. And I was in a record shop in High Wycombe, um, where they had the lines with the records up. There's about a couple of dozen people in the shop, and I'm choosing the records. And suddenly this face appears about three record racks away. He puts it, he said, Oi, Rick! Yes. He said, Do you know the Earth album you did? He said, Brilliant. I said, Thank you very much. And by this time, there's a few people going, Oh. So I carried on, and suddenly he appears again. He said, Oi! I said, Yes. He said, your King Arthur album. He said, amazing, fantastic, really loved it. I said, well, that's very kind. I thought, I'm going to get out of here quick, because by this time, there's all people around. So I stood in the queue, and I'm aware that he's about five people behind me. And suddenly he went, oi. Oh. He said, your White Rock album. I said, yeah. He said, rubbish. <laughs> I said, pardon? He said, yeah, yeah. He said, I thought it was rubbish. So I took it back and changed it for a Pink Floyd album. <laughs> and the lady in front of me said, well, I bought that, and I thought it was rather quite nice. So they started having an argument. So I left and didn't buy any more records and lost my radio show. <laughs> Nice. Were, they, were they all on vinyl in, in those days? They certainly were. I mean, you were going to say cylinder then in my age, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. It was, all, it was all vinyl. That's quite correct. Yeah. All right. OK, well, a shiny performance coming up uh, from Daniel, we think, with 18. And uh, we'll see what uh, Jimmy can do to resist this challenge. So that's all to look forward to in part two of this little show. Thank you so much. Countdown. Sponsored by Lions Battenberg.